Okay, so can you see my slides? You yes. can hear. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, um, so good evening, good morning. Um, so uh, let me change the angle a little bit to to talk about the platform responsibility. And so, so since we're talking about platforms, so I'd like to discuss a little bit what is a platform. Now, there are actually many types of platforms. Some of them are just a simple matching, you know, uh, uh, producers and uh, consumers, uh, buyers, sellers, et cetera. And some of them, like Amazon or in China, uh, TJ.com, it's more like a um, mix of the both. Um, they are actually a retailer. Uh, so they buy stuff, they sell stuff themselves. But in the meantime, they also provide the platforms for third parties. Another type is uh, it's, it's like Apple. I, I, I call this, uh, it's like a T-shape. So Apple is a producer of the, you know, electronic products, app, uh, iPhones, et cetera. But on Apple, you have the Apple store that connects the buyers and sellers. Uh, so that, so it's partly uh, a firm. It's partly a platform. So my point is that there are many of them, but when we, whenever we talk about the platform, I said it is different from a firm in a sense that it engages multiple stakeholders and then nobody actually own the, the whole thing. Um, so, and so the platform provides values by actually lowering the cost of interaction and transaction between the multiple stakeholders. It also provides the necessary infrastructures and some of the, the so-called design attributes, uh, Olive Hart and, uh, and Roberts uh, mentioned earlier, but they, they mentioned this, what is necessary to be combined, ingredients to be combined within a firm. But now we see that on the platforms, a lot of functions combined together. Uh, for, let me give you one uh, example for so, so on Alibaba's Taobao. So there's many uh, 10 million SMEs. So there's some more than a billion consumers. Now it's not just matching them, but actually the platforms also work with the third parties to provide the API capacities, payment, logistic, computing power, et cetera. That makes every uh, stakeholder on it, every SME on it to, to possess the power that really only belongs to the, to the big companies. And because of that, it is, uh, I would say, it's, this is ecosystem of the multiple uh, multiple uh, uh, stakeholders, and it goes much beyond the traditional scope and the boundary of the firm. So, so that's my, my first point. Now, so viewing platform in this way then, um, so we can think about some of the principles probably might be uh, useful. My The first principle I would like to say is that probably, so whenever we think about the responsibility, because it's a coordinate a value system that doesn't belong to a single stakeholder. So when we think about the, the responsibility of a platform, we need to think about how the value is created uh, because sim simply be, uh, assign the uh, responsibility to a single uh, stakeholder, including the platform operator that can probably jeopardize the value of the whole uh, platform. So that's the first thing. We need to understand how platform works before you think about how to, assign them a responsibility, a responsibility mechanism. Now, the, the second principle is that we probably most important is that we shouldn't take a platform as a traditional firm. In a traditional firm, we actually know who owns the firm as, uh, and who controls the firm. So as we, we assign the proper responsibilities. But for a platform, it, it's not even a, a broadcast uh, 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 a station, you know, for platform actually, it, because nobody single, no single stakeholder owns it. So you actually, you need to, the value is created in a coordinated way, probably responsibility should be assigned in such a way too. Uh, otherwise it's not very effective just by using the traditional ownership and control uh, approach. Now the third, uh, principle I'm trying to say here is that probably we want to think about the uh, efficiency of a platform. So when we think about the, and I think uh, uh, Marshall and uh, the pre previous speakers talk about the, this this issue. So we have to find an efficient and fair way to to do this. For one, 
critical issue, for example, is how much uh, should regulators step in? Um, and so I think uh, following um, Marshall's point, I would think that, that for externalities, that platforms cannot resolve by itself, regulators and policy should step in. But there's a bunch of issues because as it's, it's a coordinated uh, uh, the, the ecosystem. Actually, uh, it is to the benefits to many of the stakeholders actually to, to show the, the required responsibility if it can resolve the externality by itself. So there's a bunch of things that can be done left to the market to find its uh, uh, solution. Another uh, issue uh, we can think about is ex anti and exposed efficiency. And how much ex anti responsibility you want to place to the platform or the operator or, or some stakeholder. Uh, some of that should be just implemented exposed. And that also has a lot to do, to do with the efficiency because if there's too much ex anti requirement, it might kill this whole platform activity as we can see from some of the current uh, uh, real life examples. Now, that being said, I'm gonna apply the simple uh, uh, a principle, uh, some proposal, you know, to to some of the uh, issues people talk about a lot. The first is the con uh, product service content risk. Now, and, and so I think the right now that some of the uh, of the uh, uh, approach is to is to apply the detect detection and enforcement approach. So, for example, in the EU's the Digital Service Act, and in China's the uh, uh, a guidance for the platform responsibility, it, it is for for the for the GPR. It says that uh, internet platform operators shall verify and register relevant subject information of operations for applies to enter the platform. So, uh, anyway, so some of the stuff you need to detect, and also you should uh, develop the infrastructure to enable the stakeholders to fulfill their responsibilities. Uh, so, as you can see. Uh, this is approach, this, and this is approach that actually has some requirement, it, but it doesn't uh, ask for the full responsibility for, as a platform operator to do things. So that's a combination of the policy requirement and some of the engagement of the uh, stakeholders, uh, from, uh, including both the operator and the uh, participants. And also the enforcement part, it also requires that uh, you have the system that can handle the internal complain handling or the have dispute a settlement system. So that is the coordinate approach. Now, um, so, uh, so here, uh, uh, in, for example, uh, give me some example for Alibaba's uh, uh, Taobao platform. It has the, the, the procedure to identify the, has the uh, detection measures, including the uh, product standards and certificates requirement a quality monitoring random check, but you also have the quality flags enforcement and uh, stuff like that. Now, uh, as, as another, uh, as another uh, uh, good example, this example, it provides the platforms as this, it provides the consumers reviews, consumers queries and consumer returns. Uh, all those informations makes bigger transparent. So it is the participants of the, all the uh, most, a lot of stakeholders and with the mechanism that makes the shared responsibility such that it helps the sellers know the quality issues, it helps the platform to enforce the punishment on the product sellers. It re also resolves some of the conflicts. Um, and sometimes when the conflicts cannot be resolved, it has the online courts that actually assigned, randomly signed by the uh, stakeholders to solve this kind of issues. So this again is a coordinated approach to share the responsibility to make sure that the platform is trustworthy and it can be functional. Another good example is the, is the data privacy. Obviously, a data privacy is, is cru crucial to the users, to the consumers. But in the meantime, uh, data uh, exchange and flow is actually essential uh, for, uh, for sharing the opportunities <coughs> serve the customers well. Now, and it's, it's also the, it's very difficult for the stakeholders, individual stakeholders to have the incentive to, to really protect the, just the privacies. And so in this sense, I think the current approach, we can see that it's the government provides the guidance, the laws, the guidance uh, for the privacy protection. In the meantime, we can see the 
uh, 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 platforms across the world. We see in the United States, probably also in China to uh, come up with a lot of the so-called privacy enhancement technology and mechanisms actually to, to, to enhance the data flows between the business consumers and in the meantime, to can protect, protect, the, uh, uh, protect the privacy. How can this be done? Well, this, the so-called PETS, a privacy enhancement technology, it can either create a, a secure environment such that data can be uh, shared without uh, uh, being abused and uh, uh, to be uh, uh, circulated, or it generates safe data by masking or encryption to use or share. Uh, so that's using the technology that much reduce the trade-off between the privacy and the data sharing. And so it has been uh, uh, implemented a lot in the practice uh, across the world recently. And this is a very good example of combining the uh, policy, uh, the, the, the laws restrictions with the technology and the mechanisms with the market participants. Because overall, in the end, they do have the incentive to make this function. Now, and so as, as one example as in, in Taobao, uh, we, we also, we, last year we wrote out the order form number protection, for example, because you, you see, in order to serve the cost customers well, a lot of involving parties, they need to know the details of, about the, uh, the consumers, but then you cannot restrict them using the details. Now, so now it, it's very, becomes general that you, you all use the digital virtual numbers although to, to, to make this whole thing works and that will expire, but you don't circulate the original uh, properly privacy related information anymore. So it's pretty, pretty much co covers most of the consumers nowadays. This is a very good example. And I think it's being widely used uh, globally. Um, and also in China, if you look at the progress of the uh, uh, data, uh, data uh, privacy and security of the, of the regulations, also very interesting because in the first stage, it promotes the uh, protection of the consumer privacy and the data security through the laws passed several in crucial laws. But then <coughs> a very important policy has been just released in December of, uh, of last year. It it's called the 20, 20 measures to build basic systems for data. Essentially, it actually established a set of data rights uh, for the rights to uh, collecting, pres preserving, using, and uh, using the data products uh, uh, that's separate uh, that's separate from ownership because it's very hard to have a single ownership for the data because of the non-robbery nature of the of, of the data so it properly defines all different types it, it actually encourages the production and the exchange of data in the meantime it also has the clear restrictions on the on the circulation of the privacy related data stuff like that so so that's the can see the progress. And this is another typical issue that I think the responsibility is shared by the regulations and also the platform or stakeholders. We have technology and mechanisms to make, make this work. Now, another good example people discuss, uh, debate a, a lot is the uh, gig workers. Now, of course, the gig workers, it gives them the flexibility of the work opportunities. But in the meantime, they also probably have limited uh, uh, benefits uh, so, so what's the who should be responsible for those gig, gig workers? Now we're going to see that there's actually a variety of the of, of the policies, and there's there's different value systems regarding the boundary of these things. How do you solve these problems? Um, so, um, so I'm going to give you some uh, particular examples. For example, in China, two major uh, gig worker platforms, Elma Hemeituan. And they, they have two types of deliver, deliver workers. One is called the Zhuan Song. So they are the full-time employees of a third-party delivery service provider. Now those of us, they, they are subject to requirements on the workout times exclu and inclusivity requirements, compensation, uh, et cetera. So they are entitled to the employment benefits. And there's another, it's, 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 it's another type of drivers that are much more flexible with time, location, and they have no exclusivity state requirements. And so they are treated as the independent contractor. So that's what's uh, doing right now in China. But if you compare the US and the EU, they're quite different. The US right now, they actually last year, October, they have this six factor economic reality test. The six factor to decide, is it independent contractor or not? And it, it needs to 
in, in collectively think about those six factors, but I don't have in time to elaborate on this. But if you look at EUs, it only needs to, to, to satisfy two out of the, uh, the following uh, of five criterions. And so, for example, if the platform determines the pay, it requires workers uh, working re uh, regarding the appearance, conduct, or clients or performance of work, uh, or, the, uh, or the platform can use electronic means to, to supervise and assess the work, and uh, it restricts the time and the freedom or the exclusive exclusivity or non-competition issues. But my point here is that I think uh, uh, it, it, China's uh, right now the requirement is not going to pass the EU test for now. So I, my point is that you can see that the different uh, lawmakers actually have, they have different uh, requirement here. And so, and so the, the key is what is the most efficient and how to make this work. We have, when we think about responsibility, we, we need to think about those principal issues. Now- One um, minute. Okay, I think I need to be faster. What is this here? Um, so another thing is the uh, gatekeeper. It's, this is another discussion people talk about a lot. Now, the key, of course, is gatekeeping for what? To what extent? And that is there's this uh, a difference and for the EU it used the Di uh, digital uh, markets act to complement existing competition laws to make it faster to, to have the required ex ante obligations US is a bit slower but in some way but uh, China also have this gate gatekeeper nature in some of the stuff but they actually there's, there's a trade-off uh, uh, regarding what they believe regarding the principles, how it works. Uh, if you look at, for example, how do you design the large platforms, uh, EUs, uh, if you compare the EU, EU with the US, US tends to be like 10 times bigger than, than the EU. So what is the large platform? So the definition is different. And also which kind of things should be ex ante gatekeepers should do? Is it, uh, is it uh, correct for the self preference to be fair? Uh, to, 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 to force the interoperability, or it's just that you are forbidden to do some of the uh, self-owned business stuff like they can see, see the, there's a the difference, my difference. And I think I'm up, my time is up. Let me summarize, but I, I guess the, my key point here to re remind the audience here uh, is that uh, a platform is, is different from a firm. So we shouldn't just simply apply, apply the what we familiar with a firm, the, the ownership, the, the control stuff, then assign the responsibility. Here, a platform is, it, we need to understand how it functions, why it is not a firm. It's collective, uh, it's, it's cooperation to create value. In this sense, then we also need to assign responsibilities that is uh, uh, in a coordinated way. They have to share responsibilities. We also need to think about the efficiency of those, um, of this, uh, responsibility sharing uh, mechanisms, including ex ante versus exposed, including how much the, the government regulations uh, functions and how much it needs to leave to the market to, to find such a solution. Um, let me stop here. Thank you.